Justin Trudeau embraces socialism. That is the topic of tonight's byline. For months now, Justin Trudeau has had one policy and one policy only. Pot. Um, I'm actually not in favor of decriminalizing cannabis. I'm in favor of legalizing yeah. it. Tax and regulate. Um, legalizing pot. That's been the one thing that Trudeau was willing to talk about when he was speaking with reporters this summer. He deflected questions about other issues like the economy and said, I'll release a platform in 2015. He made crazy claims about the number of people with criminal convictions for pot under Stephen Harper's administration. He even stood by those claims when they were proven wrong and he clung to them until he was embarrassed into admitting it's all a little confusing. And Trudeau even kept embracing pot as it was pointed out to him that his own mother blamed her mental health issues on her love of the ganja. And then yesterday, Trudeau was asked for details on his pot plan and finally fell in love with the economy. Your idea about legalizing marijuana, what does it look like? Is it the kind of thing where we were buying pot at the corner store? The fact that Mr. Harper continues his prohibition uh, is of concern, but not nearly as much of a concern as his lack of action on the issues facing middle class Canadians, uh, their jobs, their pensions, their future, their kids' future. And that's why I'm glad to be drawing together this economic expertise now. Oh, he had a conversion on the road to Parliament Hill. And see, yesterday, Trudeau introduced Christia Freeland as his new economic advisor. Now, Trudeau could have appointed Ralph Goodale, a man with much cabinet experience. He was the last federal liberal cabinet minister who actually cut taxes, cut spending, and balanced the books. He didn't appoint Ralph. He could have appointed John McCallum, the former cabinet minister, one-time chief economist of the Royal Bank. He didn't appoint John. Mark Garneau ran the Canadian Space Agency. Judy Scrow ran HRDC, one of the biggest government departments. And Joyce Murray, also in his caucus, well, she started her own business and was a cabinet minister in BC. All of them have executive level experience, but they weren't appointed. Freeland was appointed. She's a journalist, a columnist, an author. Look, I can lay, lay claim to all of those titles as well. But I don't pretend to be the economic advisor to a would-be prime minister. And I want you to remember this. Most people go into journalism because math is hard. Always remember that. Math is hard. So what do we know about Freeland? Well, we know that she's a big fan of raising taxes. She said so many times. Here's one quote. Well, I would say amen to raising taxes. That was on the left-wing MSNBC in 2011. On CNN, she said, I think in the medium term, you're going to have to increase taxes. And then again, she on Twitter, she said, raising taxes on the rich is about more than fairness. Freeland also frequently cites Germany as the model the Americans should follow. And Germany is a place where tax rates hit 45% of income. She's also argued strenuously against government's cutting spending. Does that sound like a classic tax and spend liberal? Because it does to me. And in some ways, she definitely is. But from my reading of Freeland, from my watching of her many interviews and media point appearances, I can tell you that she also embraces ideas that are a complete repudiation of everything that earned the Cretchen liberal administration so much applause in the 90s. Cretchen cut government spending in real terms. Did he make m mistakes? Absolutely. Plenty of them. From robbing pension plans and EI funds? Yeah, he did all that. But he also did tame spending, and he cut taxes across the board. Cretchen ended bracket creep so that middle class people, well, getting raises, weren't taking home less money due to high taxes. In the last three years of his, his administration, Cretchen took the corporate tax rate from 28% down to 23%. It's now at 15% under Stephen Harper, and the government of Canada brings in more money. But Freeland's against tax cuts. She's against spending cuts. Folks, this is not your grandfather's Liberal Party. In her book, Plutocrats, which Trudeau's spoken highly of, Freeland essentially, well, engages in class warfare as she chronicles the super rich versus the rest of us. She speaks highly of Occupy Wall Street and quotes French socialist economists like Emmanuel Saez and Thomas Piketty, both of whom argue for a tax rate of 70 to 90 percent. It's the work of these two French socialists, as Saez actually worked at Berkeley now, it's these two that she cites so often in her book and in speeches to decry income inequality and call for a solution, like hiking taxes. But while Freeland decries the big income, ba income gap, she, she does so from an American viewpoint because she uses American data and American examples in her book. That's hardly surprising because like other globe-trotting liberals that 
well, the party brought back to save them, think Michael Ignatieff, Freeland hasn't actually lived in Canada in years. She spent most of her adult life outside of the country. Nothing wrong with that, but don't come back to Canada and claim you've got the answers to what ails this country when your diagnosis and prescription fit the American economy, not the Canadian one. As we showed you a few weeks ago, Canada has fewer people living below the poverty line than ever. The census info released last week showed that our income gap between rich and poor is, in Canada anyway, is much smaller than in the U.S. Any visit to the States can confirm this. I want you to re all remember this as Trudeau and Freeland peddle their socialist wares to the media party over the coming months and years. Oh, and in case you doubted there was a media party, check this out. What's your take? Is there really a stake for Justin Trudeau and Tom Mulcair here, or is it just going to be, eh, it's going back to being a liberal party? Well, I mean, it's the Toronto Star versus the Golden Mail, and the Golden Mail will win again, as it always does. <laughs> Freeland, by the way, wrote for the Globe and Mail. Her NDP opponent, Linda McQuaig, wrote for the Toronto Star. Media party, as always. And that's the byline. As a writer, I have been concerned and focused on the squeeze that the middle class is facing. You do not have to be an economist, you do not have to have a PhD to know that that squeeze is happening and to feel it. This is not something that you can sit down and write a bumper sticker about. It's not a three-point plan you can come up with on a napkin one morning. No, it's not a three-point plan, it's a 300-page plan. Uh, Christy Freeland's book, Plutocrats. Look, I just have to comment on her height there because uh, she stands between Scott Bryson and Justin Trudeau and she barely comes up to their shoulders. Justin Trudeau uh, is about six foot, six one. He's a little bit shorter than me. Uh, Scott Bryson, a bunch shorter than me. She comes up to his shoulders. That is small. What that means to her idea is that's something different. Let's bring in Warren Kinsella to talk more about this. And Warren, as I was just saying in the monologue, uh, Freeland is to me a repudiation of the entire Kretchen era idea of economics. She's against uh, uh, cutting taxes. She's for increased government spending. Uh, she wants more regulation. This is what she lays out in her book, Plutocrats, but it's based on an American idea that doesn't match Canadian reality. I, and I've just got to say off the top, I, w I too was struck by her. <laughs> her so she's tiny. Um, but anyway, she obviously is somebody the Liberal Party of Canada has put a lot of firepower behind. And as I warned the Liberal Party, the Conservative Party, and everybody else, and nobody listens to me as usual a few weeks ago, this is the problem when you have former journalists, guys like you and me, running for public office. Um, their former colleagues start going through their writings trying to find things that are inconsistent with their leader. And what she is saying, as you've correctly pointed out, is inconsistent with what the Liberal Party said traditionally. It's actually inconsistent with what Trudeau himself has said he had many opportunities two falls ago to fully embrace kind of the Occupy mantra and I've written a book about this myself and he didn't. He explicitly did not embrace Occupy so she's created potentially a rift between him and her well, as but has... Except, um, except he gave her a great big hug yesterday and made her his economic advisor. I mean for, for middle of the road liberals uh, you, I guess you used to call them blue liberals who were pro-business, but, you know, they want to be the guy standing in the middle. To me, this is another case of the liberals deciding, let's go to the left of the NDP and try and scoop up, all those, scoop up those votes. Yeah, I thought putting her right in the middle of that um, group with Scott Bryson, who's the guy walking beside her there, uh, was a bit of a mistake for two reasons. Number one, um, it, it instantly makes her more equal than other MPs, members of caucus who are laboring hard and long in obscurity. But secondly, it really does create the impression, as I've also written in, in the Sun papers, that she was a candidate who Trudeau favored over others to win that Toronto Centre nomination when Bob Ray resigned. So that has created some resentment within caucus as well. So I, I don't think I would have put her in that post right off the top. Now, uh, you, you mentioned uh, resentment. Uh, we heard some of that. I and mean, this is the extent. Uh, Trudeau promised open nominations for all his candidates. He's not going to be like that guy, Harper, uh, you know, who's, by the way, promised open nominations for the 2015 election. He, he canceled them when everyone was in minority situation. All the parties did. You protected the guys that were elected already and tried to find good candidates for the others because there could be an election any day. So, but now for 2015, everyone's saying open nominations. 
Trudeau saying, oh, I'm not going to be like that guy, Harper. I'll be really open. But then with Freeland, he not only made it clear that he backed her, but he changed the date of when you could buy a membership for, uh, by to vote in this and essentially disqualified hundreds of people from voting in the nomination battle. Yeah, you know, and I, I have gone on record. I was really disappointed, and, and so were a lot of people. I heard from many uh, former members of caucus and some present members of caucus who really felt that the whole way in which Toronto Centre was handled was wrong. It was unfair to them. And it was unfair because um, she did seem to be the chosen one, and they were having to labor under these new rules. Now, I guess Trudeau's argument would be, well, you know, the old top-down approach. And Brandon Suarez yesterday, um, you know, the the Tory candidate, the one who had really wanted that nomination, you know, they lost his thousand-dollar uh, registration fee, and that's created problems, I think, for for Harper. So I, I guess, you know, Trudeau's argument would be, well, look, that's the old system and that gets you in trouble. I'm trying this new way. And, you know, and in well, fairness well, to them, maybe, maybe it'll work. But so far, I don't think it is working. 30-second uh, response. Let me ask you this. His late conversion from speaking about pot solely to saying he'll talk about the economy, just not give you any ideas. Uh, is, is that headed in the right direction? I, I, uh, I agree. I can't believe I'm about to say this. Uh, I agree with Paul Wells. You know, since he's become leader, Trudeau really has two summers to create an impression for Canadians. And the last summer, this one just concluded, uh, was talking all about pot. You know, and pot's important for like less than half of 1% of the electorate. Um, but for the rest of us, you know, we want to hear about jobs. So I think Trudeau's now realized correctly he's better, he better switch to jobs because the election's going to be here before you know it. All right, send us your thoughts, byline at sunmedia.ca. Warren, we'll talk to you again. Thanks, Brian. Stick around.